I'm on a journey to make content no one is asking for or will watch just for kicks. Because why am I talking about how K-pop songs take advantage of writing craft? That's something I can't tell you, but I'm here to tell you about telling as well as how and why K-pop songs do or do not utilize it effectively. I get in a habit where I binge the same single YouTubers videos and I do it over and over and over. Last month it was mostly Ever Glow Up, I could probably recite some of Cheryl's videos word for word, but right now I'm definitely in the mood for Shaylin Wright's videos, who is Shaylin, they are quite possibly my favorite YouTuber period. And they just make me so incredibly excited and passionate about writing craft and I want to incorporate that more into my channel and content. It's a different form of analysis, but it's another one that I just love. One video I watched was specifically about how show don't tell is actually bad advice. <laughs> and I tried to find songs that I felt conveyed different aspects of the topic or at least how I feel just me on my own. I want to explain how I think telling can be done well because if we're being honest, I don't think there are actual hard and fast rules to writing. Or I don't think there are many, even as someone who's very painstaking about things like every individual comma rule and all that stuff. I think being a, I think being good at writing is about knowing rules and breaking them effectively, but even then, that's a rule we can't always default to. I could talk about this for hours, but we need to talk about K-pop and how it functions as poetry. Like I said, I, I have a handful of songs I want to talk about, and one of them is Drama by Espa. So one thing Shaylin talks about is how they prefer the way they reworded the advice to be described, don't explain. And they talk about a professor asking them and their classmates why they were so afraid of exposition, they could not directly state anything. They wouldn't even have a character say, my dad works at a bakery. They would have to create a scene at the bakery to show the dad working there, creating something so unnecessary when it would be so easy and harmless to just be direct. Drama does something interesting in utilizing things like I am statements. I mean, they start the song with I'm the drama. They're willing to say I am and is this specific instance figurative? Yes, I would say it constitutes a metaphor and that makes it come off less as exposition. But they're also able to cover their bases and speak, which is important to me. There's this thing, and you might say it's just subtext, things conveyed but not said, but I feel like it's something slightly different, commentary without commentary. <laughs> I don't like it that much a lot of the time, but what is it? I'm always confused when I think about how there are people who study art and will like write papers on it. To me, a picture of an apple is a picture of an apple. Maybe I can tell you if it's more realistic or cartoonish, but to me it's an apple. To others it says things about groups of people or time periods, and I simply don't understand that personally. I don't understand how that works. I need words, and if you're going to use words, you can't be too afraid of them to actually say anything. It's a good writer's job to keep track of what approach is appropriate and effective, and that means using specific words, ideally unabashedly. Say your dad works at a bakery. Say you're the drama, or that you like it when you're savage. There is subtext here, but sometimes a song has to let the listener in. If you are not in the world Espa opens, the drama will never affect you. They bring the drama, bringing these words off of the page for our consumption, for us to be the girls and the world in the back. Next we have Rover by Kai. I once took a class called Dramatic Action, which was an English and theater hybrid class where we analyzed famous plays and identified how the character's speech acted on recipient characters to progress the story's conflict. We had a giant list of action verbs to choose from because specificity was always key. Everything Kai says in Rover has intention. It acts on the subject in a series of relatively vague threats while, while maintaining a more blatantly elusive personal quality, enjoying the means of subverting typical expectations. The subject's face is familiar, identified but not identifiable, legitimately illegitimate, and thus intentionally made to feel so much lesser. You just can't figure him out though, utilizing a bold, simple statement to help him hide in secrecy. Again, being direct is a fully valid option in order to convey things without having to sacrifice perceptible style and depth. You can be direct and discreet, you can be told as a means of showing, and in my opinion that is so important to understand K-pop, which sometimes comes off heavy-handed but has a lot of depth that gets ignored due to assumptions made about it as a genre. The depth is perceptible if you look and read carefully. That all being said, writing is an art. I'm not saying it's impossible to write in an objective manner or even that it's never favorable when writing in verse, but it's definitely harder in verse, and I honestly think it is usually more fun to toy with psychic distance 
games and to discard that as a game at play entirely. JYP girl groups are often pretty good at this with examples like NMX's Love Me Like This and Twice as The Feels, both of which I believe take full advantage of their art form. Love Me Like This can be very evocative, describing chasing the beat of one's heart and how it gets louder, and the song is so openly communicative. However, they also do not specify how to love them, simply repeating like this or like that, but it continuously changes the distance of the writing. They really repeat wanna as they say if you wanna to round out the first verse, but loving is a process you can't really explain, you can't sum it up even as they try. The Feels is also great at taking advantage of its art form. They utilize the long-standing tradition of apostrophe in verse to address the subject in a non-traditional way with non-traditional descriptions of love. The term feels doesn't exactly mean much of anything, but they are incredibly expressive, having no apparent need to skirt around their legitimate feelings. It's like the opposite of The Stranger, which did portray the main character at such a distance, but that was to prompt questions if he had any legitimate thoughts or feelings at all, good, bad, or whatever. Did he have reasons for what he did? What defines existence, if anything, but coming first according to existentialists? What is the meat of essence and are we coerced into sharing it with people like him and can we be sure we are not like him? A song I really like but still have to question is Fire Saturday by Secret Number. The thing is though that it needs explanation or telling essentially because what does it mean to be welcomed into this world? Drama characterized Espo's new world in an effective way, but Fire Saturday doesn't really offer up qualities of its world. We only know whose it is and it comes from showing. Telling would be very helpful here. Or, or maybe that's the point. Maybe they actually pull it off. I do like the song after all. Maybe it's for a reason and worse poets or fiction writers probably couldn't pull it off. After all, you could probably compare it to Do What We Like by Twice in terms of abstraction, and that song is incredible in my opinion. The writing is gorgeous. I also think it's harder to be bad at poetry than fiction, though it's also harder to be great at poetry than fiction. In the end, it's all about understanding language and its devices, but we also read different things for different reasons, and I feel that, especially in poetry, preferred styles do tend to vary a lot. Every heart, every heart, every heavy, every, every one. Every heart, every heart, every one.